Hallelujah, Lord God. So good to be in your house again tonight, Jesus. We've come to lift you up and praise your name, God, and just bask in your presence one more time. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Mm. Our hearts cry, be magnified in this your holy temple, in this your holy place, and we will rise to Zion's height to praise and glorify you. Unified, our hearts cry, be magnified in this your holy temple, in this your holy place, and we will rise to Zion's heights to praise and glorify. Yeah. 
because you cared for me in such a special way that's why i praise you and i lift you up and i magnify your name that's why my house tonight amen Amen. it's great to be able to come together and lift him up I was listening to brother Ben preach a couple weeks ago he's talking about Moses and his frustrations and his anger and I wrote in my notes Moses let his temper get the best of him and uh, that's kind of an ordinary phrase I think I use it correctly but it kind of was this epiphany moment in this light bulb in my head moment he let it get the best of him. And I want to choose deliberately what I give my best to. I've come into the house of the Lord tonight to give my best to my God. I don't want just something to get my best. I don't want fear or anger or frustration to get my best. But my best here on purpose tonight is to praise my God. Hallelujah. I've come to worship him, my almighty God who's more than able. Hallelujah. I hope that's what you're here for too. Hallelujah. I will rejoice for he's made me glad. Amen. Hallelujah. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I'll enter his courts with praise. Yes, man. 
Jesus, God, that you are alive, God. We can stand here tonight to know, God, we know the true living God. We know that you're alive, God. God, so many people, they worship other things, have other gods in their life, but they're not alive. There's only one true God, and we're so thankful tonight that we know you, God. We love you. We praise you, God. Thank you for who you are. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus is alive, isn't he? There's something about that song that gets you excited. Because there's only one God that's alive. And if you don't know that, you can know that tonight. But there's only one God that's alive. One God that can instantly change your life. One God that can heal you. One God that can do something for you tonight. And that's Jesus Christ. And uh, we're going to have our offering helpers come up to the front and get ready to take up the offering. Um, and just thinking about a uh, little thought tonight, um, I was thinking about um, there's a lot of things that you can give to. There's a lot of things that want you to give to things. There's all kinds of uh, organizations and things to give to. One of the things that is always hard to give to something is your confidence in it. Whether your money's going to really go towards things that they say it's going to go, are they really doing what they're saying? And I was thinking about. You know, I grew up in this church, and from everything that I've done, my confidence in what I do and what I give into this church, I know just what comes over the platform, what we see on the screen, the videos, but just what I see every day. Anytime I come into this church, anytime that I'm doing something, putting my hands to the work, I have a confidence knowing that my church and my pastor, that the leadership, that what the money goes towards is going towards the needs. And I was reading in Haggai, um, it was talking about the Israelites were supposed to be rebuilding the temple. But in the time span that they were given to rebuild the temple, they actually were putting their priorities onto their own homes and to other things, and the temple wasn't being built. But I'm so happy. I was thinking about how today we're not building a necessarily a physical temple here, but we're building into the kingdom of God. And we're building the kingdom of God across seeds, but right here. And I got an opportunity to go with worldwide to just help bring some furniture to someone that was in need. And that's building the kingdom right there, showing God's love. Just showing how much other people that don't even know you care. And that's what we're doing, and that's what this church does. When you give, it supports. It's building God's kingdom. It's giving people the opportunity to find the God that's alive. So I encourage you, if you have your confidence, know that what you give in this church, it is making a difference. It is going to meet the need. And we're going to just pray. Dear Lord, we thank you, God, for, we just thank you for your blessings, God. You bless us every day. There's so many things, God, that you do. We don't even know, but you do it every day for us, God. Thank you for all those that give, all those that are faithful in giving, God. We know that you're going to bless them. 
We, if we consider the poor, you said that you would be with us in time of trouble, God. And we're just thankful, God, for who you are. We love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. You can come to the front if you want to give. Thank you. Keep on casting your bread upon the water. Soon it's going to come back home on every way. Keep on casting your bread upon the water. Soon it's going to come back home on every way. Good measure, press down, shaking together. Keep on casting your bread upon the water. Soon it's gonna come back home on every way. Just keep on casting your bread upon the water. Soon it's gonna come back home on every way. Good measure, press down, shaking together, running over. Soon it's gonna come back. So keep on casting your bread upon the water. Soon it's going to come back home on every way. Keep on casting your bread upon the water. Soon it's going to come back home on every way. Good measure, press down, shaking together, running over. Soon it's going to come back home on every wave. So keep on casting your bread upon the water. Soon it's going to come back home on every wave. You got to keep on casting your bread upon the water. Soon it's going to come back. tonight and if um, you can have sister Khadijah come up and leave her song in the house of the Lord and as she's coming up if Mel needs a praise also could come up, come up and get ready to leave their song and uh, just a couple announcements tonight um, we need extra cleaners after all the services for now to help us to disinfect um, we also ask if you can please check the floor around you Push up your seats, and this will help make the process go quicker. So if you can help our cleaners, we'll definitely be thankful. And then announcement for tracking this Sunday. Next Sunday, tracking will resume. You can meet in Bissell Hall at 6 p.m. Come out and be a part of witnessing to those in our surrounding area. And how many of you uh, find a joy in tracking? It's a flesh killer, but... I tell you one thing, when I've done it, and it is a flush killer, it's not always easy to do, but um, how many can attest that when the anointing, when God's presence begins, when you're nervous at first, but then when God just begins to come in and begins to flow through you, the excitement that there is, it, it's, um, I know when I, I'm just going to talk about this because it's a passion of mine, but when I started to get back into tracking, um, some of us brothers would just go on our own on a Saturday. And, um, you know, a half hour is not long enough. Really, a half hour, you're just, you just starting. And we always talked about that. So we went on a Saturday just to do it on our own, just go out on the streets and talk. And when the anointing begins to work through you, it's amazing. It's, it's almost you need your coffee in the morning. If you witness, it's like a burst of energy that comes into your life. How many can attest who's testified, especially when you're, reaching them. You can feel that God's moving through you. So I encourage you, if it's something that like, oh, I couldn't do that, all you got to do is allow the anointing to move through you, and God really does take over. God will put the words there, and people are hungry. People are lost. People need, and when you really have God, that's the difference. When you really are a born-again Christian, you really have God, they see the difference. 
They know the difference because there's something, it's the Holy Spirit. It rises, it quickens you, but it, it become excited, and they can feel that. And um, I just encourage you to come out and, you know, half hour, you got people that, that have been doing it for a while. I learned from them, and it, it's, a, it's a great blessing. Praise God, everyone. Um, this song uh, we're going to do is called uh, Pieces. Um, this song means a lot, a lot to me. Um, it uh, talks about God's love, and um, it's personal for me because uh, when I was in pieces, God, God's love uh, loved me together again. And um, sometimes you chase things in life, and uh, it leaves you broken and empty promises. And uh, God, he picks that up, and uh, he pursued me. <laughs> And he loved me with an he loves me with an everlasting love. And don't doubt God's love for you tonight. If you're in a doubting place, he loves you. He says his thoughts towards you are more than the sands of the sea. He'll pick you up when you're down. He'll turn your life around. Just uh, trust in his love and trust him. Just trust him tonight and just worship with me. This song. It's not 
not a troubled mind It is an anxious It's not the restless kind Your love's not passing It's never disengaged It's always present It hangs on every word you say Love keeps its promises Keeps its word troubled mind. God, your love's not anxious. It's not the restless kind. God, your love's not broken. Yeah. Your love's not broken. not broken your love's not broken God your love's not broken God your love's not broken God it's not in pieces God it's not in pieces your love's not broken your love's not broken, your love's not broken, his love ain't broken, his love's not broken tonight, his love's not broken. God's love. If melodies are praising, you can get ready to come up and sing. Oh, there they are. Thank. And I was just thinking about God's love. God's love for us. It's a love that passes anything we can imagine just to think that no matter what you do, it never will put you too far from God. And God's love is is uh, that's something I think in, in everyone's life we've always had to come to a place to understand that you can never go too far, that God doesn't love you. And God loves you. God loves you tonight. If you feel that way tonight, just know that he's always, his grace, his mercy, but his love is here for you tonight. Praise the Lord, everyone, tonight. 
I love Jesus. How about you? Amen. I was just thinking about, um, we've heard so much this week, the past few weeks, in fact, about the value and how important it is to put your trust in Jesus, especially in these perilous times that we're facing right now. And I thought about my life, and the further I progress in my Christian walk, the, lo the more I'm learning what it means truly to trust in Jesus in a much deeper way, in a higher way. And I thought about some scriptures this afternoon about trusting in Jesus and the value of trusting in Jesus. And Psalms 9:10 says, And they that know thy name will put their trust in thee. For thou, Lord, hast not forsaken them that seek thee. We heard Psalms 91 this morning. And verse 2, I love the context of trust in that particular verse of scripture. It says, In him will I trust. And my Bible says that means in him will I take refuge. Psalms chapter 5, verse 11 says, But let all those that put their trust in thee rejoice. Let them ever shout for joy, because thou defendest them. He's our defender today. He's going to look out for us, right? He's got our back. And Psalms 46 says, Though the waters therefore roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Selah, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted among the earth. And we have a unique opportunity right now as Christians to really let our lives, our lights shine for Christ because people are praying. They're scared. They're troubled. And I thought about this, the song that says, the, the poor fainting seaman on the way, he may be rescued during this time. You may find someone, your light will shine on someone who, who's looking for that, that lighthouse in the harbor that's lost. And they may just be saved through this, this trial that we're going through in our country and in our world. So I just want to encourage you tonight that we're going to sing about that. You all know this song. And I believe God has really put this song on all of our hearts about still I, no, no matter what, though the seas may rage, though the waters are troubled, I will trust you, Lord. That's what we're going to sing about tonight. I've walked a valley alone, but there's a hand guiding me where to go. So I will not question those storm clouds come my way. For I have placed my trust in you, and you alone. Still I, still I will trust. In my dark hour, you re 
restored my weary soul. You led me to that resting place, and you made me whole. So I will not question when stormy billows roll. My faith secure, safe is my trust, God in you alone. Over and over I'm learning, still I, still I will. Lead me, Lord, and I will follow, still I will. To The storm rages on, and I can't find my way. Still I will say, still I will trust you, Lord. Still I will trust you, Lord. Still I will trust you, Lord. Stay. 
Hallelujah. Worship team, if you can come and get ready to sing. Let's just raise our hands again. Just thank God. Maybe that's you tonight. Maybe, maybe you need to trust in God. Maybe, maybe you've come tonight. Maybe that song is talking to your heart tonight. Just to remind you to trust God. Let's just lift God. Just raise our hands and just thank him. Thankful, God, for who you are. God, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God, that, God, I, I felt your peace in that song, God. God, that's an assurity, God, to know, God. God, no matter what we go through, God, we just, we lift you up. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's just lift you up, Jesus, above the circumstances. Thank you, God, that we have you, God, to trust in. Thank you, Jesus. We love you. mountain and I looked all around couldn't find nobody nobody and I walked the deepest valley and I looked all around couldn't find nobody nobody oh I searched all over I couldn't find nobody Nobody can save me like you, Jesus. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Oh, nobody can hold me like you, Jesus. Nobody can hold me like you, Jesus. Nobody greater.
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. It's nobody greater. Amen. Is there someone in the house? that doesn't know that. There's a lot of us that do. But is there someone here tonight, I hope you're here and you're searching for someone greater. You've come to the right place. Hallelujah. There's nobody greater than Jesus in your life because he's the creator of your life. God made every one of us in his image and his glory for his glory for his pleasure and you know what God's pleasure is tonight that you be the best person you can be tonight I want to talk about becoming a diamond becoming a diamond for God if you have your Bibles, turn to Isaiah 60, verses 1 through 5. Thank you, worship team, worship singers, special singers, special testifiers, church people praising God in the audience, the person who brought the water up here, God bless you. God bless you, brother, for pouring it for me. All workers together, amen, for one purpose to show the world who Jesus is. Come on, somebody. We have been given the greatest calling in the history of the world. We are called to be his vessels to this world. I want you to think about that for a minute as we read these scriptures. Are you there in Isaiah 60? Verses 1 through 5. Isaiah 60. Amen. Amen. Some of the old folks are getting there. Got to watch this corner over here. They, they get rowdy all the time. We have to calm them down. Glad Brother Ben's over there close to you to watch over you. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Let's read this together. Arise. Everybody say arise. That means get up. Get up. Shine. Everybody say shine. Yes, sir. Get up and shine, for thy light is come. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and a gross darkness the people. But, hallelujah, but the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. <laughs> Woo! I'm already excited. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light. And kings to the brightness of thy rising. Let me tell you what's happening in our world today. 
We heard some of it this morning in the messages of times past. But it's all flowing into this one thing. We as the church are called by God to shine his light through the darkness. Oh, God, I love that. Hallelujah. I ain't got time to not shine. I ain't got time to get hung up in all the things of the world. <laughs> I got a light. God gave it to me. He ain't taking it back. We have a misconception about grace in the end time. We think that grace will cover anything we do, any time we do it. But I got news for you. Lights can't shine when the glass is clouded. Lights can't shine if there's no oil in the lamp. Lights can't shine if there's an obstruction in the way. As much as the light is still in me, it will not shine the way it's supposed to unless I make a decision to let it shine. Come on, somebody. Let it shine. Arise. We live in the dark day. We've heard this. We see it. Listen to the rest of the scripture. Lift up your eyes. When you rise up and you shine for God, this is what's going to happen to you. Lift up your eyes and see all they gather themselves together. They shall come to thee. Thy sons. Oh, I, I, this is personal. This is personal to me. My son is going to come home. If I keep on shining, if I keep on shining for Jesus, not get caught up. It's a trick of the enemy to get you caught up so you don't shine right. Oh, Lord, help us. Your sons shall come from far, and your daughters shall be nursed at thy side. Oh, man. Anybody claim that blessing tonight? Claim that promise? You know what? You know what? You know what's going to make that happen? Shine. Keep on shining. How can people get out of darkness if they can't find their way? Why would they come follow you if you're just as dark as they are? And I'm not saying this to condemn anybody tonight. You want to take it personal, you go right ahead. Hallelujah. If the shoe fits, wear it. I had to come to this. I ain't preaching. I'm preaching to the choir, baby. I remember when I tinkered around with the things of the world. My light wasn't quite shining as bright during those times. I wonder why. I'm not saying this to get you down. I'm telling you, get up. Arise. Arise to the task of the church. It's time for the real church that's Holy Ghost filled, blood washed in the blood of Jesus, to rise up and take their place in this dark world. And I'm, is it going to be easy? No, it's not going to be easy, but God promised something. He says it's going to be dark. There's going to be gross darkness. But, but the Lord is going to rise on you. And the glory of the Lord is going to be upon you. That's his promise. That's a promise. He ain't taking it back. Amen? You will see and flow together. Your heart shall fear and be enlarged. Because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee, and the forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. This rising is also indicative of Jerusalem rising in the end time. When God refocuses all his energy and, and, and prophecies to Israel to make them rise one more time as a great nation. A nation shall be saved in one day. That's going to happen. 
But this is also prophetic to the church. We live in, is anybody in living in the dark days? Are we there? I ain't looking for any darker. It's pretty dark right now. But, like Pastor preached this morning, I'm not going to fear, but I'm going to shine. Woo! Look at this for just a second. A prophetic word for this dark day. It's come. It's here. The darkness that's covering the world is darkness of ignorance from God. Sorrow. It's the darkness of wickedness from sin. It's called the night of obscurity. It's the night of doubting. The night of lack of faith, of real faith in God. We never lived in such a time when everything is accepted. And then it's being mixed together in such a way that the power is being taken out of the Word of God and being changed to suit us. I can't do that. As soon as I do that, my light's going to dim. It ain't going to be as bright as it was before. This is what's happening. Gross darkness means the gloom of a lowering sky. The heaviness like a wet blanket. Ever feel that? You ever feel the heaviness of the world? We, somebody talked about that this morning. How about the blanket of unhappiness? Is that, has that been your life lately? Despondency, sadness, discouragement, melancholy, downheartedness. I see this working in people all the time. All you have to do today is look at the face of that person walking on the street. I have never seen faces so troubled and so tormented as I do today. We have the greatest country in the world, the greatest blessings in the world, yet there are still people that are lost. They're lost in that darkness. How are they going to get out? Just like I got out, someone came and shined that light on me. 1976, a group of teenage Christians were tracking on the street Little light bulbs shining for Jesus. That light caught my eye. And I'm here because of them and because of the prayers of the saints in the church. The prophet declares that this will happen spiritually in the last days. It's going to get dark, folks. Let's, let's just understand that. There's going to be pestilence. There's going to be earthquakes in diverse places. There's going to be troubles. All these things are going to come. Jesus warned us that they would come, but he never told us to quit. He never told us to give in to ourselves, to our own desires. He never told us to give up. He told us to shine. Keep shining. Keep shining. Ephesians 4, 1 through 3 says, I, this is Paul speaking, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love. As a matter of fact, if this whole chapter of Ephesians is worth your time, there's some powerful instructions in there on how to live for God the right way. No excuses, no, no compromises. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Walk worthy of the vocation. I used to think this meant your job. Vocation, job, career. No. The word vocation means the salvation that was given to you. Are you walking worthy of the salvation that was given to you? Well, we're going to talk about how we do that. It's so simple. Shining is simple. We complicate it. We do. He said through the prophet Isaiah, arise, that means get up from wherever you are, and shine. <laughs> That sounds easier said than done. Well, the only way that's going to happen is if you want it to. <laughs> the only way it's going to work is if you want it to. I want to shine for Jesus in this end time. 
I don't know what's going to come my way tomorrow. I don't know what we're going to face tomorrow. But it doesn't change the shine. As a matter of fact, in a couple of minutes, I'm going to tell you why it's okay to have darkness around you. What? Really? Let's find out. Shine for Jesus. How do I do this? Well, I thought about a diamond. How does a diamond shine so beautifully? Made me think, let, let me take a look at this. And this was very interesting to me because diamonds actually get their brilliance from three things. Reflection, refraction, and dispersion. I'm going to say that again. Reflection, refraction, and dispersion. Reflection is the light that hits the diamond and is immediately bounced back out. <laughs> Giving it an instantaneous shine. Man, when I got saved, I shined instantaneously. Remember when you first got saved, how shiny you were? A few amen corners out. A few out there, amen. Hallelujah. So a diamond is simply a reflection of the light that comes to it. While this glimmer is impressive, it's only the very tip of the true radiance of the diamond. Only a portion of the light is hitting to a diamond is reflected. The rest is travels through the diamond. Oh, my God, help me, Jesus. Oh, man, I feel the Holy Ghost. It travels through the diamond. Why? <laughs> oh, boy. Hallelujah. So the, a part of the light is reflected instantaneously, but then the rest of the light goes through the diamond and produces what is called diamond light. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. But when I come inside you, you are now the light of the world. How's the light going? How's your light? Is it on? Is it, did the bulb burn out? Did you shut it off? How's the light? Man, I, I love this. I love this. Diamond light means the light moves through the diamond and it is scattered and fractured, creating the sparkle. Man, I don't know about you, but I want to be a sparkling Christian. Turn to your neighbor and say, do you want to sparkle? Huh? Then arise. <laughs> then arise. Come on. Amen. The sparkle that diamonds are known for. This is the refraction. In essence, diamonds are tiny, complicated prisms. Sounds like some of us. Complicated little people. I'm so complicated. Well, even if you're complicated, God can still shine in you. Amen. Listen to this now. The light enters through the top and then is angled around the inside of the diamond before being aimed back toward the top again and out through the surface. But it becomes brighter as it goes through the diamond than it was before. Oh, Lord, help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. God expects you to shine today a little brighter than you did in the beginning. 
That's why he says, be ye separate from the world. Come out from among them, and I will receive you. I'll make your diamond shine the way it's supposed to. Woo! This creates a rainbow effect or dispersion and actually adds to the shine. When this is added, this added shine, I thought about what Jesus said in the New Testament. He said, let your light so shine. He didn't just say, let your light shine. He said, let it so, so shine, like brilliantly, sparkly. Let your light so shine before men that they see something. They see something. They see something. What do they see? Your good works. That's why I can't go back to that world. That's That's why I can't touch it and the unclean thing anymore because I can't do his good works if I'm tied up in that nonsense. Oh, they see it. Oh, nobody knows. Oh, oh, they know. They know something different about you. Something changed. You used to be so vibrant. Anybody ever tell you that? Ouch. I was going to name this message Ouch. But I thought that would kind of turn everybody off. I thought Diamond was better. That sounds better, you know. And I'm not saying this. You see, people misunderstand the gospel. Yes, God loves you. Yes, God will save you. But you have to be careful with that world. There are no guarantees. One scripture says they, they did wickedly so much that he gave them over to a reprobate mind. The light stopped shining, and God says, I, I can't do anything more for you. See, it's, it's, it's a deception. Sometimes the way we present the gospel to cause people to think that no matter what they do, there's no consequences. That's not true. If, if you, you want to know, you want to know how this works, how grace works. I'll tell you exactly what to do. Go rob a bank tomorrow, and watch what happens. You get caught. You go to court. You go to jail. You repent, and God forgives you and loves you. However. You're in jail. You're still in jail. But I want to get out. Not until you pay the debt, brother, sister. See, we think there's no consequences because of God's love. That is wrong. I'm, gonna, I'm here to warn you. Be careful with that thinking. There's a lot of thinking out there. It doesn't matter what you do, when you do it. God will always, yes, God will forgive you. If you honestly and truly repent, God will forgive you. That's his nature. That's grace. But nowhere does it say you're not going to have some consequences. Whatever a man sows, now can you stop the cycle? Yes. Can you break the cycle? Yes. How? Shine. Keep on shining. Keep on shining. How long? As long as it takes. As long as it takes to get back to that place where you're free in God completely. And not one part of your inside of your heart has darkness in it. See, your heart can be cleansed. Your flesh can't. Your flesh is the curse of sin upon it. But your heart can be made perfect before God. This is the truth. I'm telling you, can I tell you some truth tonight? God deals with your heart. He knows your flesh is corrupt. He knows, Paul talked about the battle he had with his flesh. He had to keep putting it down. He had to crucify it. He had to keep going to Jesus. Like, Jesus, help me with this thing. But his heart, his heart. But there's still consequences to sin. Don't let anybody kid you about that. 
Be careful. You rob a bank, you get caught, you're going to jail. I don't care how much you look good and have a suit on and comb your hair properly and sing the songs of Zion to the judge. You're going. No, you're going. Because it's the law. Because it's the law. Now, grace covers the law, but grace cannot help you unless you help yourself. All of us, myself included, have to keep in that place where I'm shining for Jesus every day. Like fear, what Pastor talked about this morning is so great. Fear is darkness. So if we allow darkness and fear to come in, then our light's not shining properly. Amen? That's what I'm talking about tonight. Amen? You see, he said, your good works, the, the refraction... Hold on a second here. Good works are not just the big good works. That's what usually we think about. Oh, do your good works. Missionary work, preaching on a, behind a pulpit, you know, a convalescent home ministry, visitation committee, everything that we name is what we think are the, the major good works. But what about your daily life? Huh. That's a little different, isn't it? What about the good works of a morally mature person? of a person who has a high standard of morals. Do they see those good works in you? Do they see that you disagree with some things? Do they see that you're still kind when you disagree? Do they see your good works, how you stand for God? Do they see you smile when you're in your biggest trouble? There's more good works than just going to a visitation meeting. There's the good works of everyday life. The many sides that the light shines through a diamond are like the many sides of our life. And I thought about this. What makes my light go brighter when I hold up the morals of God? Oh, my God. Somebody praise the Lord. Hallelujah. When I stay away from sin, when I say no to temptation, what, <laughs> oh, somebody, uh, you guys aren't getting this, but, but when, <laughs> when the light comes in, I don't want it reflecting off of a dark place in my life. I want it to reflect off the high moral standard that I have in God according to the Bible. Sin is still sin. It hasn't changed. Come on, somebody. So that is to live a life that exhibits godly character, moral courage, personal integrity. Did you lie this week? Did you tell somebody a lie? You just hit a dark place that the light cannot reflect off of. Woo! Uh, can I bring it home? Did you run somebody down this week? Did you gossip? Did you steal? Did you cheat at work? Did you tell a dirty joke? Did you watch a dirty movie? Can I give you some examples of moral, what I'm talking about here? The light can't reflect properly off of those things. I'll have the light. God gave us the light. He ain't taking it back. But how we show that light is through our moral excellence and showing the world that as Christians, we are different than the world. Come on, somebody. We're different. Oh, man, I, I, know, I know I'm never going to get there, but it's okay. I'll just stop somewhere. Godly character, moral courage, personal integrity, mature behavior. Man, I had to grow up. That was the hardest thing in my life. I had, to, Sister Saunders, I had to grow up. And sometimes I had to shut up, even though I didn't want to. But the moral character of God said, don't you dare open your mouth and say how you really feel. He that winneth souls is wise. See, there's a wisdom to winning souls. 
This light is to win souls. This light is to reach out to people in darkness. You know that your light will shine. If you are a high moral courage person and you live your life with high morals, your light automatically shines. You don't have to do anything. People will come up to you and say, something about you. Anybody ever have that happen? I've had that happen so many times. People go, there's something, there's something different about you. I see you. What is it? I don't bleed around a bush. It's Jesus. What? That's what it is. Now, am I perfectly moral and I don't have to do anything anymore? No. I've got to choose to do this every day, just like you. I'm tempted like you are. We're all tempted the same. There's nothing new here. Jesus was tempted in all like manner as we are, yet without sin. But can we also be like Jesus? Absolutely. It should be a goal we all want to reach. So think about how, what we're talking about, the facets of a diamond. What reflects the light back to the world is how you live your godly character. Living your life with humility, showing his righteousness and gentleness. Maintaining self-control with patience. Bearing with one another with unselfish love. Make every effort to keep the oneness of the Spirit in the bond of peace. I can't be shining my light brilliantly if I'm messing around with the church and telling people I'm not happy. Come on, somebody. It's time to grow up and be a Christian. Boy, it's a good thing Jesus didn't complain. I don't know how to go to the cross. Why should I die for these selfish, crazy people? Can you imagine if he said all that? Yeah, he wouldn't have been able to fulfill his mission. The father would have said, uh, well, Jesus, I thought you were going to do it, but I guess you're not. Got to find somebody else. But God came to this world himself, put on flesh because he knew what he had to do. Do you realize what God went through for you? He became one of you. No one can ever tell me, God doesn't understand me. He does. But he also knows and understands why you do what you do. And if you'll talk to him about that. You know, I counsel for a long time. There's one thing I have learned in all the counsels that I have ever done in my whole life is this. There is a source to every problem. And if you can knock that source out, if you can get rid of that source, you will be free from that problem forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. How do I know that? Because I used to do some things when I first got saved that had to be cut out of my life. And let me tell you something about a diamond. Only a master diamond cutter. Can make the value of a diamond increase because he knows exactly where to cut it. And it's funny, the first place they go with those unpolished stones that they find in the earth, they don't come out like that. They don't come out like diamonds. They're unpolished. They do reflect a little light because they're translucent, but he looks for the weakness in that place and strikes there first. Boom! Then he starts to cut it into something that becomes so beautiful and brilliant. And you know how he does it? He uses another diamond to cut the diamond. Don't get mad at people trying to help you. Could be God's little diamond. Saying, Reverend Kalinsky? Chop, chop. Chop, chop. Brother Galen, chop, chop. Trying to help you. Trying to cut the diamond. The master diamond said, tell me what to do. And then do we allow God to do this work within us, to take away those dark areas so that we can shine brighter and brighter. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God help us. Hallelujah. So these are the goals that we should be working toward our life. Now this refraction and dispersion, this is interesting to me. 
Remember I told you earlier that sometimes darkness has to be there? You're going to love this. I never thought of it this way until I studied a little bit about a diamond. This refraction and dispersion also creates natural light and dark areas in the refracted light, depending on where the light hits along the planes of the diamond. These dark areas in the shine may seem counterproductive, but really they are the substance needed to achieve the diamond's trademark brilliance. The darkness magnifies the intensity of the light. I'm going through the biggest trial of my life. Shine! This is the time to shine even more. Because if I gave you all a candle right now, and you lit that candle, there would be a little bit of light in this place. But if I shut the lights off, that little candle all of a sudden becomes very important and shines a greater light than it did before. The darkness makes our light shine even greater. I got good news for you. It's getting dark out there. But the darker it gets out there, the brighter it's going to get in here. <laughs> the, the brighter we're going to shine for Jesus. This is the plan of God in this end time. Amen. Amen. You see, it's the light that illuminates the truth. The light exposes darkness, and the recipient knows what's there. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, oh, hallelujah, cleanses us from all unrighteousness. You know, the blood is in the light. The blood is in the light. But we got to bring it to the light. We got to bring the problem to light. We got to see it for what it really is the source. Bring it to the light and let Jesus' blood cleanse you from that, deliver you from that forever. See, one thing I'm learning about my life. If something keeps drawing me back to the same thing over and over, I have got to take a long look at this. What's happening here? Why is this thing a problem to me? Ever ask that question? Can I get real? This is real down stuff here tonight, man, just talking. But I got to see what, what, why? Why can't, well, then I, just, then I realize something. I have to make a decision not to even pay any attention to it. The Bible says resist the devil, and he will what? He will flee from you. Problem sometimes is we don't resist him. Now, does that make you condemned? Does that make you lost? Only if you don't bring it to the light. I'm going to be honest with you. Bring it to the light. Let the light shine on that place. Let Jesus do his work in that place. And then you're going to be restored back to that joy, that peace, and that love you had when you first got saved. It's amazing when we're first saved, we don't worry about anything. We just love God. We're so filled with light. Our Bible goes everywhere with us. We testify to everybody we see. It's, it's an amazing thing. Then we learn some things and, you know, something comes along. We think we're missing something. Young people, you're not missing anything in this dark world. You, I'll tell you what, I was in this dark world. All I'm going to tell you this, it's dark. It's pretty dark. I don't care how much fun you, I don't care how much Las Vegas is lit up. It's still Sin City. Come on, somebody. I don't care how much they make it look good, how much they laugh. You know what, you really want to know what's going on. Catch them when they're alone at home. And they're discouraged, and they're despondent, and they don't know where they're going. They don't know why they are here. Church, we have to shine our light. Young people, you've got to shine your light to those young people. You've you got to shine. You've got to remove everything that might be, by, might be hindering that shine. Don't compromise the shine. 
Don't compromise the gospel. Don't try to look for an easier road. There's only one road Jesus approves of, the one he told you. He said, if you keep my commandments, then you are doing the will of God. You're my friends. Keep my commandments. Well, I'm struggling. Keep my commandments. I don't know what to do. Make a choice to keep his commandments. Fight with everything you have. But you're not alone in your fight. Bring it to the light. Tonight, you can bring it to the light. You can let God's light shine upon it. And his blood will cleanse you from all unrighteousness. When the woman that sinned was caught in the act in the Bible, she was an adulteress. She was a harlot. The law said she must die. They brought her to Jesus. They threw her at his feet. He got down, started writing something. Theologians for centuries have been trying to figure out what he wrote. One of my questions when I get there, what did you write, Jesus, or are you just doing that to just buy time? Or did you write something? Anyways, I can focus on that, or I can focus on the real moral of the story, the account. Jesus said, he that is without sin, cast the first stone. Good saying. Hey, I like that. Jesus is fair. They all dropped their stones because all of us have sinned. So he looked up to the woman and he said, where are your accusers? They're not here, Jesus. Neither do I condemn you. And most people stop there. That's where the super grace people stop there. But the very next thing he said is very important. But go and sin no more. Because if you do, I might not be able to help you then. We have to see this for what it is. We have to understand this. Grace is grace. God's grace is the most. If it wasn't for God's grace, I wouldn't be here. You wouldn't be here. But it has to do with the heart. And we have to be careful we don't use God's grace for our own gains, for what we think it is. One scripture says, be afraid. It's a fearful thing. This is the New Testament, by the way. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. We have to do with this God. Someday we're going to face him. But you know what I love about church the most of anything? I love shouting, dancing. That's great. Wonderful. But you know what I love most about church? Is I can come here and get my sins judged now so I don't have to face them over there. Judgment begins in the house of God. This is the good news of the gospel. Amen. So tonight, I had some more, but I'm just going to stop right here. Tonight, God wants to make you the shiniest diamond that he can. The question is, will you let him? And what I want you to do this week I know we're going to have prayer in a minute. But what I want you to do, if there's something in your life, one thing, just pick one thing that you've really been struggling with, you've been really having a hard time with, let God's light shine on that thing and show you what to do. And by the end of the week, if you do this and you pray about it and you let God show you, he's going to give you the victory over that thing. And he's going to make another facet of your diamond shine a little brighter for him. How many wants to be a jewel in God's hands? Raise your hand. Amen. Oh, jewel's going to be a jewel. Amen, jewel. You got it. You got the name. And David said, I got the jewel. Amen. So tonight, I know our altar call is going to be different. So we'll do what we did this morning. If those that are going to pray, just come to the altar. The ushers can still come. I'm pleading to someone here that might be visiting here tonight in this place that you have an opportunity to come right now, and they'll pray with you very kindly. Amen? They will. 
But I'm not going to ask you to come to the altar tonight if, if something in the Word hits your life. I'm going to leave it to you to deal with it right where you are. Because you're the only one that can fix it. We're here to help. We're here to guide. And we do have some things we have to do, guys. A person once told me, I don't want anybody telling me what to do. I said, did you go to work this morning? Yeah. What time did you go? Nine o'clock. Who told you to go at nine? My boss. Come on. That, that, that dog won't hunt. I hope brother, brother in Alabama heard that one. That dog won't hunt. See, we come up with all kinds of excuses. But really what it comes down to is, do we really want to shine for God in this end time? Let's stand to our feet. Hallelujah. I don't know if the orchestra wants to come, please play some music. This is your time with God now. This is the judgment of the word has come. Where are you in this place? Where am I in this place? I have to live it just as much as you do. I've been tempted just as much as you do. We live in an ungodly world. We're bombarded every day. Never has there been a time when information is actually compromising Christians. Too much information. Too much. Bef not only 50, 60 years ago, there was a Bible pretty much on every coffee table in every house. And they would read that Bible once in a while. Today, whatever. Today we got everything on TV for us. We can find out how to do it 60 different ways. I'm telling you how to do this. Let the diamond cutter cut the facet in your life to shine a little bit more for Jesus. Amen? Amen. So let's raise our hands. Talk to the Lord right where you are. Right where you are. Talk to Jesus about your life. Hallelujah. And I know, I know God will forgive those who are sincere with him. But realize this, make sure that that's cut out forever. It takes time, they said, to cut a real diamond. Now they have machines that do it. And man, the, that, that craft of the man with the hand cutting the diamond is, is becoming a dying breed. There's still a few around, though. They're still experts. But let God cut this thing out of your life. Whatever's not shining in your life. Amen? Oh, let's praise him. Let's sing something. Leaders, come. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah.
Let's worship God out of your hearts. you holy 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 i want to see you oh lift up your voice hallelujah Look them up. See you high and lifted up above all things, oh God. Shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing. Holy, holy, holy. To see you high and lifted up. Shining in the light of your glory. Father, we thank you in this place, oh God, in your house. Hallelujah. The light of God will shine abroad in our hearts, oh God. Hallelujah, because you loved us. Hallelujah. Light will break forth. Hallelujah. 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 Dark places shall have light shined upon it. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, God. We open our hearts wide in every corner of our life. Hallelujah. Shine in every area. Hallelujah. Greater is he that is in me than he that's in this world. Oh, hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. Oh, we thank you for your light. We thank you for the glory of the Lord that fills these vessels of honor. Hallelujah. We are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, Jesus. We are your walking church. We are walking light posts. Hallelujah. And we all radiate your presence all around us, oh God. Everywhere we go. You said everywhere your foot shall tread. Hallelujah. We can claim it for the glory of God. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Oh, we thank you, oh God. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, we glorify your name. Oh, the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, God. Oh, let your presence fill every vessel. Oh, their sickness heal these vessels now. Hallelujah. Let your anointing start from the tip of our heads and drive down this body now. In the name of Jesus Christ, let the light start from the top and shine down to our feet for the preparation of the gospel of peace. Because when I walk out of here, I'm going to have a testimony of healing. I'm going to have a testimony of salvation. I'm going to have a testimony of the glory and the power of the living God. Hallelujah. I'm not just any rock. I'm a diamond, the most valuable rock in the world. God, we command your light to shine in every church in our world. This is our time. This is our moment. We look to you and all your power. All of us shut up. We thank you, God. Oh, hallelujah. Church. When a woman gets engaged, 
you put a diamond on her hand. And I'm here to tell somebody Jesus is using us as the engagement ring for his bride. You got a place oh, in the church. You're at one of them diamonds on that big ring that's going on the church, the bride of Christ. He's going to use your life. And you know what the bride does when she gets engaged with that big old diamond on her ring? She even praises God differently. She shows off the diamond that's on her hand. And I'm here to prophesy to you, God is about to show off his trip. He's about to show off with your life. I wish somebody would take 10 seconds right now and praise him in here. He is going to show off in your life. Let your light break through. God's going to show off. Woo! I'll tell you, this is the weirdest church service in the world, man. I feel like running, jumping, shouting, all this stuff. But you know what? We're soldiers in the Lord. You know how we can salute each other? Right here. Go in Jesus' name, soldier of the Lord. Praise the Lord. God is faithful and God is true. Let him show off in your life this week and let him work on you in Jesus' name. God bless you. If you can help us clean and disinfect and all that fun stuff, help us.